Welcome back to Semper Grazing Ranch, everyone. I want to hopefully take a quick video um, and go over one of the mistruths or misconceptions of co-locating warm season grasses in a cool season pasture. We are in Southern Ohio um, near Cincinnati. So we are in a mostly temperate uh, climate. So we can grow warm season grasses uh, pretty darn well. Um, they mostly come on towards the middle of end of April and then they start to fade out as the temperatures dip below 50 and then definitely below 40, uh, which we've had a couple nights here lately. So warm season grasses are fading out. Looking at this paddock that I am currently setting up, you, unless you have a very trained eye, you really don't see them. So a lot of people think that the warm season grasses will take over or the opposite, that warm season grasses can't be managed in a cool season pasture. Um, I, I heard that, I believe that was a message and I have someone that can verify that at the National Grasslands Council meeting we went to like three or four years ago. Thankfully, I'd already planted this massive mixture. Um, so it was what it was. But we've had huge success managing both using the savory holistic plan grazing. So the key to warm season grasses is you don't graze them during their buildup. So as soon as they start to green up at the base of the crown, you get off. And if you know what date that is in your area, don't have your entire farm in warm season grasses. Have it be a portion, 40, 50%, maybe no more in this region. So you graze those fields right up until green up, and then you spend the rest of your time when the grass is cranking and you don't need half your farm on the other half of your farm or third or two thirds or whatever it is. Then you do get to graze it starting in our area. I like to start grazing around June 15th. That seems to be right before most seasons, the switchgrass, which is the only one we've got, would be putting out a seed head where it really loses palatability. And then we graze that sucker hard. Um, something like four or five times every summer, drought or not, um, and it just keeps coming back. It's got a really deep root system, it's amazing. Whether that's on the high ground or the low ground that is really wet, almost even in a drought, which is why we chose the switchgrass. But, to answer the question about space, I wanna show you one, one crown. We'll just go through, start grabbing them. So this really stemmy stuff here, this is the switchgrass, okay? Really, really dense carbon. Animals didn't want to eat it. It got pretty darn tall, but they did eat it down to this. This is not bush hog. Inside of this, throughout the entire crown, there are blades of the most tender orchard grass coming up. So, so there is no space lost, I'm doing quotations, you can't see, uh, having warm season grasses that are dormant, and I know switchgrass doesn't stockpile well, there's others that stockpile better, but none of them, none of them stockpile as well as orchard grass, which doesn't stockpile as well as fescue, which we have a lot of. And there are tons of examples of, that's another one of orchard grass, growing through the thing. Here's one of fescue. So here's a crown of switchgrass and a whole bunch of fescue. Again, I mean this fescue is not very, come on focus, sorry. Again, this focus switchgrass crown is dormant, but then this fescue isn't very healthy. Some of them are better, some of them are not so good. More orchard grass. Here's one that's actually a little bare inside, but it looks like that was a pretty good hoof print and the plant itself was struggling. So, I mean, I walk through here and I see all kinds of different plants. Like, you can't even see that this is this was switchgrass inside here. The orchard grass is coming on so strong. 
anyway you just have to believe me so again if anyone has any questions about how we planted this aka uh hint we use sheep um where we got our seed how long it took to establish itself we didn't fertilize none of that um you know just hit us up in the comments this is really really important because this has saved our farm from having to feed hay numerous numerous times almost every single year so therefore we can have a heavier group uh, a larger group of animals heavier animals and not need to add land an expense or feed hay another expense and the animals are healthier for it as well I'll jump off my soapbox again we just want to be of help to everybody you guys take care I got to get these rascals in see ya